this could be a bit of a fun one. What I've got here is an ESP32 cam with a backing thing on it to run from USB. And I used to use these as security cameras up until a couple of years ago when I upgraded to real ones. What I want to make today is some kind of trail cam, but using one of these instead. Now the thing is, for trail cams it needs to see an infrared, and here's some footage that shows, well as you can see, it doesn't do very well at all. It doesn't see the infrared lights, and of course then is useless for nighttime use. So what I'm going to do is take the front off this, and take the little lens out. It should have a pink colour to it, or a red colour, and that should come out of this camera. I don't know if it will. But then we'll test it again with this, which is what I was showing in the footage, and see if it works. And then I might put something like motion sensing on it, see if uh, I can connect it to the Wi-Fi, or maybe save to SD card with pictures. I don't know yet. Let's see how this project goes. So the first thing I'll do is to, you might be able to see a tiny little dot of glue at the front there. And that's what I've got to get rid of to enable this top piece to turn round. That's stopping it at the moment. Get this thing off and let's see if we can find, hopefully, the little pink disc thing inside that stops infrared. Alright, I've got it loosened off now. Let's see what's inside. Oh yes. Hopefully I can pick that up and you can see the pink kind of colour and I've got to get rid of that, if I can get rid of it. Some of these are just a disc and it'll fall out and others are actually glued on to the centre itself so that's next to find out. Well, I thought the project might have to be cancelled because inside this one, in this camera, you couldn't get that little thing off. You couldn't get the infrared filter off. But then I found this one, which is a different brand. You can see the, uh, the words are different at the bottom. Different camera on it. And this one, I'll show you. Right, I've taken it apart and you can see, hopefully on this right hand side, you can see that the little lens part for infrared is actually attached to that section. So I should be able to take that off. There we are, I've taken it off. You can see that. Well, it looks like blue there now, but that should mean we've now got infrared ability next to test it. And here is that footage. I've taken it behind the house, looking into the woods, and the first thing you notice is it's near enough black and white. But also you can see the frame rate needs improving, so I'll be putting a better aerial onto it, better antenna. Then also try and find some infrared LEDs as well. May have to order them. But the whole idea then could be a self-contained unit, on Wi-Fi that I can view from inside the house. You know, like a Wi-Fi trail cam. Next thing to do is to connect that decent antenna, and I'll do so to the top right. Well, you know how life works. I've just ordered a hundred infrared LEDs, and then I was looking through this box for some other parts, and found 21. 21 infrared LEDs. I've tried them with a battery, and they do seem to shine. So, that little panel of infrared LEDs is going to go on here next. And there we go, I put a bit of glue on. It's a nice little unit, ready for testing. And just before I show that footage, is a decent offer on Amazon. eighteen ninety nine for three of these, that's about six or seven dollars each. About the same price as I paid around six years ago for mine. So yeah, they are still available and they're a decent enough price still. Also, I definitely recommend going over to Random Nerd Tutorials. That's Rui Santos, and I think it's his sister, Sara. They do some great tutorials on these things. And they'll show you how to set up the Arduino environment, how to put the code in, how to upload, what connections to use. Lots of great projects once you do buy yourself some of these boards. And in this case, I've used their software for this project. So, here's the first test footage, and it was completely rubbish. Oh, basically what happened was I took it down to the front of the house and, you know, started to record what have you, put some corn down, thinking that something would come along to eat it, perhaps a raccoon. Well, then my wife called me upstairs, went upstairs, stopped watching the feed from the computer, uh, helped her out with whatever was going on there, and came back down and there was no footage showing because what had happened was the raccoon had knocked the power lead and had made the thing disconnect. So when I went back down to collect the camera, the corn had gone and there was no footage. Anyway, moving on. But here, the system proved useful. Now we know who's been stealing the cat's food from the back porch. 
There he is, a raccoon, just nonchalantly eating away. And although it's not the brightest of image and the frame rate's not that brilliant and etc. etc. Et of excuses, at least now there is that footage to show who's been stealing the food. Uh, the distance to the paint cans and such at the back of the picture is about 5 feet. Now for power usage, it is about 250 milliamps from a USB power bank, which is quite high, but it is driving those 21 LEDs. Uh, there is some heat as well that's generated, probably because of that power usage, so a bit of a heat sink needs to happen. All in all though, it does work, and they are improvements for the future. But to round off with, I thought this was kind of funny, when he'd finished eating, he decided to take a look at the camera. Here he comes now. Comes along, has a good old sniff, and actually knocks the camera a bit. Hey, cheeky fool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.